All right, in lesson 2.2, we're talking about equivalent decimals. And equivalent decimals, that's kind of a fun uh, word to say, equivalent. Uh, but remember, we have to look at, you know, what do we see in it? And just like a equation has that equi part, well, that means it's equal. Uh, so the equivalent decimals are decimals that have different names for the same number or amount. It's a different name, but the same value. So let's take a look at our first example here. And uh, we look at two tenths and twenty hundredths. Well, that'd be just like saying I've got two dimes, uh, and each of those is ten cents, and then I've got twenty pennies. And so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And all of these are one cent, uh, or one penny, or one, oh, uh, one cent, one hundredth of a uh, dollar. These are two equal amounts, twenty cents, two dimes, and twenty pennies. So the same idea, um, but once I have a set of ten of these, once I have a set of ten, then that becomes a dime, or a tenth. And I've got two of those, so I've got two tenths. And the value, even though we may look at it and we have, well, 0 0.2, and I've got 0 0.20, the value of them is the same. And a way to kind of look at this is if we use a place value chart. And so in a place value chart, both the numbers have a 2 in the tenth place. So we have zero ones, but we have two tenths in each. And then there are zero hundredths in our 20 hundredths. Well, if I put a zero in here, it doesn't change the value of it. Uh, the zero to the right of the two does not change the value of the decimal, as long as it's to the right. So two tenths and twenty hundredths are equivalent, or that means that they are of equal value. So let's take a look at another example. Write the numbers in the place value chart, then write equivalent or not equivalent to describe each pair of decimals. So if we look at this, we've got 2 and 5 tenths, so we put our 2 in our 1's place and a 5 in our 10's place. And then for our second one, I've got 2 and 50 hundredths. So I've got 2 in my 1's place and I've got 50 in uh, to the right of the decimal, 5 in my 10's and 0 in my 100's. Well, are these equivalent or not equivalent? Well, just like the previous, previous example, the zero in our hundredths place to the right of the decimal, as long as everything before it is the same, these are equivalent. So, I'm going to write that they're equivalent. Cross my T. They're equivalent. They're equal. They're the same value. All right, for our uh, next one, again, write equivalent or not equivalent to describe each pair of decimals. So, I need to put in my numbers. So, I've got zero and 73 hundredths. So I've got a 7 in my tenths and a 3 in my hundredths. And then my second one, I've got 0 0.703. So I've got 0 in my one, ones, a 7 in my tenths, a 0 in my hundredths, and a 3 in my thousandths. So if I look at these, I've got a 0 in my ones, 7 both in my tenths, but my hundredths, I've got a 3 in the top one and 0 in the bottom. And then if I wanted to put this placeholder 0 in my thousandths for that top one, are these the same numbers? Not at all. So these are not equivalent. Alright, now we look at our next. Write two decimals that are equivalent. So we have three numbers right here that we're looking at and I want to write the two of them that are equivalent, that are of the same value. So if I Look at, I've got 3.05 or 3 and 5 hundredths. I've got 3 and 50 thousandths because I have to go, this is out to the thousandths place. And I've got 3 and 5 tenths. Well, just like we did before, which ones do you think are going to be e uh, equivalent to each other? Well, it's going to be our 3 and 5 hundredths and 3 and 50 thousandths. That zero at the end right here, that does not change the value. It changes the name, sure, if we say 50 thousandths, but it doesn't change the value of it. So number four, 
we have one and a uh, hundred eleven or a hundred and ten thousandths. We've got one and one tenth, and we've got one and eleven hundredths. So which two are going to be equivalent? Well, it's going to be the first one and our last one here. So I've got one and one hundred and ten thousandths and one and eleven hundredths. Remember that zero right here, it doesn't change the value, it changes the name, hundred and ten thousandths, but the value of it is the same. And for number five, which two are equivalent? Well, it's going to look at our place values. I've got a one and my tenths, an eight, and a one and a one. Well, this is a hundred and eighty thousandth. This is a hundred and eighty ten thousandth. And then I've got eighteen thousandths. Well, the two of them that are going to be equivalent are going to be the second one and our third one. So I've got zero and a hundred and eighty ten thousandths and zero and eighteen ten thousandths. Those are the two equivalent ones. And then our last one in this set, we have seven and seventy-seven hundredths. Seven and seven hundred and seven or seven and seven hundred seven thousandths and seven and seven hundred seventy thousandths. So the two of them that are equivalent are gonna be, well it's gonna be this first one here and this last one here. So I've got seven and seventy-seven let's fix that. Uh, seven and seventy-seven hundredths and seven and seventy or seven hundred seventy thousandths. Let's clean up how that seven looks. There we go. These are two equivalent decimals. So write a equivalent decimal for each number. So here is where you can be creative with the way that you want to make an equivalent decimal. So for the first one, if I were to do this, my equivalent decimal, I've got five hundredths. Well, as long as I add a zero to the end, I'm not changing the value, I'm just changing the name. So this would now be said as fifty thousandths. And for number eight, we, got, we have two and one hundred thousandths. But those zeros at the end, it doesn't change the value. So I could just have two and one tenth. For number nine, I have two and eight hundred seventy-five thousandths. And I could have two and eight thousand five or eight thousand two and eight hundred seven hundred let's correct that again. Two and eight hundred seventy-five ten thousandths. I didn't change the value, I just changed the name here. Uh, adding that zero to the right of our decimal at the very end. And then our last one, I have 40 thousandths. Well, I have, if I just take away that last zero, the value of it is the same. 40 thousandths is the same as four hundredths. That's the end of lesson 2.2, .2, where we're talking about equivalent decimals.